Hello, everybody, and welcome to Energy Readings with Shelby Aesthetic. I'm your host, Shelby Aesthetic. I always feel so weird saying that at the beginning of every show. <laughs> okay, um, I'm a little, I feel, I'm trying to keep myself um, here. I've been traveling, so I just got to um, a place where I can kind of plug in and ground myself and get ready to do this show. So I'm, I'm super happy I could do it. I was. I started to get nervous that I wasn't going to be able to make it, so um, I'm glad to be here. I hope you guys can hear me in the chat room. Um, so tonight's show is going to be with Kareen DeWinter. Kareen's been on my show before, um, and I'm going to get to her a little bit in just a second. Um, but the show tonight's going to be pretty fun. We're going to do some some stories, I think, and um, we'll be lucky if Kareen might read some of her own, her own stuff, too. But... Um, it's going to be a fun topic, so we're not here next week, so we figured, you know, why not do a Halloween show? No, well, a Halloween-like show. Okay, so I'm going to kind of give you guys uh, a little bit of an update about what's going on with my show and what's coming up on Intuit Talks, and then we will um, get to Kareen here in just a second. I'm so excited she's here. I'm excited I was able to make it here. Okay, so... Like I said, there's no show next week because it's Halloween. We must go trick-or-treating. I have to make sure that my son brings a huge haul of candy back to the house. Um, but the following week, I have Sue Broom on. So she is, um, we're going to be talking about her new book, Signs from Your Loved Ones. And there's also some other things that I would like to introduce you guys to with her. Um, she's a pretty neat lady. Um, she's got a fabulous website, and we'll get into all of that when she's uh, here on November the 7th. So that's two weeks from today. Um, upcoming on into a talk. So tonight after my show, it looks like Kathleen Moore is going to be on Curious Times. And if you don't know what Curious Times is, you should check it out. It's actually a really awesome show. I listen to the archives quite a bit, but uh, Chris usually, she's the host. She's always cracking me up. She's a she's a really neat person. Um, also on her show will be Friday will be Selva and then Saturday Kareem will be on there. So if you miss a reading with her tonight, tune in on Saturday. I'm sure she's going to be doing readings. Sunday Scott Collins is on Angel Meadows and then November 1st, this is the this is the one I'm excited about. Uh, Jenny is going to do a show, Jenny's House. Uh, the dis it's gonna, the discussion is gonna be how to lighten up our energy, and then there's gonna be some other topics followed by readings if there's time. Um, Jenny's actually the owner and creator of Intuitalk, so, um, she's an awesome person, and if you're listening outside of, uh, the live show right now, then we are broadcasting from Intuitalks.com, and you should check that out. It's a, it's a really, uh, it's a neat place, especially for spiritually minded people that want to create their own free websites. Um, if you want to create a podcast or a classes and teaching or anything like that, there's all kinds of options that you can look at that she has on the website. Um, she's got it set up now where it's really neat. You can do video if you want. I choose not to because I don't like combing my hair. And... Um, also in archives, if you listen, if you listen to any of the shows or you miss any of the shows on Intuit Talks, you can always go to the person's show page and check out their archives. There's so many good, uh, shows on the archives on Intuit Talks. Um, and, and Intuit Talks goes out to tons of different platforms. So it's on YouTube and, um, you can listen to it on Spreaker. You can listen to it, um, uh, iHeartRadio, Google Play. That's where I listen to it. Um, but there's just, there's so many, um, really neat shows. So check out some of that stuff. There's actually my, I always, I always plug this one. It, it hasn't been live for a while, but it's Teaching Tuesdays with Renee Richards. There are some excellent, as a matter of fact, I just listened to one, um, earlier last week, one of those old shows. And there's always, uh, it's a really informative show. It's not just, um, psychic reading, so it's about learning and developing. So if you're into any of, any of that stuff, um, spiritual development, stuff like that, check out check out that show's archives. Okay, I think that's all. I think that's all the the little announcements I have. I'm going to bring Kareen on. Hey, Kareen. Hello. How are you? 
I'm okay. Um, don't you hanging out with this? Don't you, love, don't you love being in a room with all people you love? Oh yeah, it's the best. It is. So I might be on a delay, Shelby. I don't mean to talk over you. No, it's okay. I'll probably it's it's me, not you. <laughs> I have I do I have kind of a bad habit of um of doing that. I have a hard time hearing anyway. So we'll work. It'll be fine. We'll we'll figure it out. Are you enjoying the full moon? Yes. Oh my God! I just saw it. It is magnificent. Yeah, it's pretty glorious. If you haven't looked outside yet, you guys should do that. It's I don't know what it is, but um. I, I don't know what it is about a full moon, but talk about getting energized. I mean, it's nighttime, and I should be getting ready for bed, and I'm ready to party. <laughs> <laughs> right. I've always liked the moon, though, right? I mean, I think it's cool. Plus, it brings out the werewolves. I love werewolves. Totally. Oh, my God. I'm looking for one myself, Shelby. <laughs> <laughs> So what's going on with you? So listen, guys, Kareen, if you don't know, and I'm sure that you do, but if you don't know, Kareen is the Purple Plate Lady. So uh, purpleplates.com. She's also um, an artist, an author, a psychic medium. Uh, she's an amazing friend. She's talented. Um, you, she also does smallworldfund.org, so that helps um, those in need, right, Kareen? Families in need? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So she's got a lot of stuff going on. You can also visit her at KareenDeWinter.com. Um, I was just looking at some of your purses and watercolors and stuff. So you, you have some cool stuff on your site. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, you know, I wish I'd sell more of it, but whatever, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, yes, I understand. I do. It's hard, you know, and plus, because you create everything that's on your website, right? Like, it's not just – I mean, you've created these things. I have. I, I Well, most of the things I've created myself. I, and I'm always thrilled, like, when I sell perfumes or something that I create or, you know, some of the jewelry. I'm really – I'm so thrilled when I, when I sell something that I've created, you know. It makes me feel really good. Well, it should. I, I have. Uh, I actually own a few pieces of your artwork that are hanging on my wall. I think you're extremely talented. So, and plus, you've written books, and I mean, you're just like you're like the uh, what do you call it? A Swiss Army knife of talent. I mean, you do like everything. You do watercolor, mixed media, painting. I'm sure sculpting, crafting. Cre I mean, you're just like so creative. Where do you yeah. find time to do all this? Well, you know, um, hmm. You know, it doesn't feel like sometimes you're like living day to day and you're like, well, you know, I don't have any time to, to write or I don't have any time, but we, we always find the time, right? If we want it, like I did a painting the other night and I was like, I feel like painting and I'm just going to stop packing up orders and I'm going to just do a painting and I did. So we have to really make the time. Uh, Shelby, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Well, I feel like, well, I, with me, um, I don't know what it is, but I feel like my creativity comes in waves. So I'll go, like, months or weeks sometimes without wanting to even create anything. It's really, I don't know what that is. I just, it's like I just don't want to have anything to do with it. And then all of a sudden, it gets, you know, my hands will start buzzing, and I'll be, like, painting everything and... <laughs> Right. You know, like make like 50 different things out of nowhere, which is interestingly enough, it, I have been having that creative streak again um, lately. So, and it just comes out of nowhere. I don't, I don't know what that, are you like that or are you just sort of like always wanting to create? No, no way. I'm not always. In fact, I'm having a hard time lately being inspired to do anything like that. But I mean, you know, I mean, I just think um, it, it comes and goes in waves, like much of our mm -hmm. lives. Uh, so, I mean, we can't really force it when it's not happening, when it, we, we don't feel it naturally. But um, certainly there's things we can do to inspire ourselves to get more creative, you know. Yeah, yeah, I do. I think, I, I mean, and in the, of course on the downtimes, I'm, I'm like always inspired by things that I'll remember to do later. 
but I just don't, I don't know, for whatever reason, it's, um, I don't know, I guess, we, I guess I just need that break. I don't, I don't know what it is, it's just kind of, <laughs> I always thought it was kind of weird, but now that I know that you do it too, and that you're also weird, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so what's been going on new with you? What's happening? Um, hmm. Not much really new. Um, I, I went to the beach where I said, that's how I sent Max, your son, the, uh, horseshoe crab shell. Cause I yeah, thought that it was, was so wicked cool. cool. I thought it was so cool looking and I'm like, I know who I'm going to send this to. And, um, it was so neat. It was the neat, I, I opened the package and like sand started spilling out. And I'm like, what the hell's happened? What's going on here? <laughs> But then I opened it and saw it, and I'm like, oh, my God. He was just thrilled about it. It's the neatest thing. We have it hanging now, hanging yep. on our wall. He loves it. So while I was at that beach, um, I saw this crab, right? And um, it was sort of big, maybe uh, 10 inches across. And Shelby, so I start following the crab. It's in the water, and it can see me, obviously, right? And it jumped. It was all colors of the rainbow. It was so beautiful. I didn't take a picture of it because I didn't have a damn camera. But so it jumped up at me, right? And I was like, oh, my God, right? So then I keep following it, and it jumped up again higher at me. And I was so scared. I ran away from it. <laughs> How big was it? <laughs> That's so funny. It was so yeah, it was only like 10 inches, but it was the most beautiful. Crab. Well, that's kind of it. Yeah, I mean, if it was like, you know, one of those little two inch Florida crabs that you see, those little tiny <laughs> ghost crabs would be like, come on, Green. Yeah, I know. No, I was, believe me, there were tons of crabs where I was standing, like little ones. But this one was huge and, and just, it's just so beautiful. And I wish I had gotten a picture of it, but I didn't. But anyway, so I was really scared by that crab. I was like, man, they sure know how to protect themselves, you know? Yeah, no, they're they're actually really they're actually kind of cool. I mean, just I I, I like them. I think they're neat. And so you went um, to so you were on the East Coast then, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And okay, also on also on that trip, um, not to interrupt you, sorry. Um, I went to a bookstore. And this bookstore was mostly outside, so it was pouring rain, and it's like in the woods kind of, so you walk, you're walking through the woods, but there's shelves and wardrobes and cupboards and wow. things, and you open them, Shelby, and there's books in everything. And That's it, cool. It was the most magical thing ever. I loved it. And, so it was um, outside? Yeah, it was mostly outside. Like, I'd say 80% of the bookstore was outside. And nobody else was there because it was pouring rain. So then I found the poetry tent, and I was thrilled. Um, and so I went into the poetry tent, and I stayed there for most of the time I was there. But... It was just the most magical, cool bookstore ever, you know? It sounds incredible. That's like, I love that. I, it's like nature, you know, I mean, what better place to read books anyway? I love being outside. Yeah. In nature yeah. and reading a good, especially poetry. That's awesome, Corrine. Where was this? It was in Niantic, Connecticut. Wow. That is super cool. So you just, like, was, accidentally came across it, or did you mean to? Um, well, I, we were looking up used bookstores, and um, I saw that there was one right down the street from where we were staying. So that's the one we went to. And um, But next time I go to that town, I'm definitely going to go back there. I mean, you know when you get into a used bookstore, you're like, I want this, I want that, I want everything. <laughs> and, uh, yes. So, um, but we got... I got a few books there that, um, you know, like um, Dante, not Dante, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, Dante's Inferno and Pictures by Gustave Doré, who's a really, I love his work, you know. So it's all pictures of the Inferno book um, drawn by him. It's so cool. And, it sounds um, really neat. 
Yeah, and then what else? Oh, and then I got some free Raphaelite art books and um, a few other ones. I can't remember everything I got, but, yeah, I was thrilled. I was so thrilled. I love books, you know? Yeah, yeah, I know it's definitely your jam, but I would love to see that place. It sounds really neat. Oh, yeah. They do, um, they do like, an art walk thing here where they have all the local artists that, you know, like a, you know, art show kind of local art show here, but they do it on the mountain. And we went a few years ago, and they had uh, off uh, to uh, to the kind – of, it was at the show, but it was kind of off to the side a little bit. There was a little uh, place where somebody had set up, like, cupboards, basically, with books in them. And so now there's all these little um, – I guess from that art event, they started creating these um, – and they're kind of getting popular all over the nation now, but little pop-up libraries. So if you mm-hmm. go to different parks, tiny uh, little pol- like cases with all the – and people in the community bring their books and drop them off, you know, when they're done with them, and they'll grab another one out of it. It's just a really neat exchange. There's no money involved or anything. You just bring books or go get a book. Um, but they have them all over our city now. It's really cool. Yeah, they do, and they it's even spread to other countries. And did you know that the guy who started that just died last week, Shelby? Oh, no, uh, I didn't know that. Wow. I, I, what a cool thing, what a neat legacy, though, um, to, to leave. Because I think books are important. I mean, to me, turning a page is, is not the same as uh, flipping your e-reader. <laughs> It's just not the same to me. <laughs> no, me neither. I don't think I've ever read a book on Kindle. I don't have a Kindle. And I just like the physical book way better. I do, too, because you don't have to charge them. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> no, I just I think that's such a cool thing to do for people. So, All right, so I don't want to get too off topic because – I know that if there's time, we want to try to do some readings. So what are we talking about tonight, Kareen? What's the – What's the? I know we're doing some spooky stories. Do you have anything um, – do you have anything you'd like to share? Yeah. Um, and here's the thing. So after years and years of, you know, investigating supernatural, paranormal, ghostly stuff, I still maintain the scariest stories I know came from the Warrens, Ed and Lorraine. And I know that probably some people here have heard these stories before, and I apologize, but I was trying to think of of real, you know, scary supernatural things that have happened, and I couldn't think, I I just kept going back to what what I learned from the Warrens and what I witnessed. So... I just want to, but I also want to mention, Renee did a, um, an article on residual energy. Um, mm-hmm. with, yeah, I was going to, yeah, I'm so glad you brought that up. Yes, go ahead. And it, it was awesome. It was excellent. And um, I want to say, like, I had heard a story before, um, you know, I knew what residual energy was, but I had heard a story before about living ghosts. They call them living ghosts. So this this couple moved to an apartment building, and excuse me, in the apartment building they would hear this arguing going on, and sometimes they would see images of a guy and a girl arguing. So they just assumed that it was you know ghosts or whatever from the last or some tenants that had lived there. So they went to a party in the same apartment building, and they were looking at a photo book of you know that this lady had there. And they noticed the two people that they saw in their apartment arguing. And um, so the girl said, this this is the couple we see, you know, did they die? And the lady said, no, no, they just moved. They're living across the um, city or whatever. So it was like those were living ghosts. So as Mm. Renee said in the article, uh, in her uh, blog, I'm sorry, um, she said, you know, if there's an extreme amount of emotion in any area, it's going to get stuck there. And so a lot of times, um, she, you know, she knows way more than I do about this, but 
a lot of times we will encounter something that we think is a spirit or a ghost, but it's actually just residual energy. And I assume that at, um, like Auschwitz and um, things, you know, uh, of the Holocaust, like places like that, that, there must be tons of residual energy because of the emotions and everything. So I just yeah, think yeah. it's so interesting. I think it is too, and I think it brings up, I think, something else that's really interesting about, you know, not just the, the blog, but residual energy, I think, in general, is uh, when you think about, like, thought forms. I mean, basically, um, when you're pouring energy into something and you create something, you know, in fear and, you know, it torments or tortures you or poltergeists your house or, you know, those types of things um, can happen. But is it is it some terrible entity outside of you or is this something self-created? Um, but either way, it's made up of um, energy that you have put somewhere. So, and I'm, I wonder too. And I've actually, um, I think it was you talking about. It may have been. I, th- I thought I heard it on Chris's show, a, like last year, um, talking about uh, people moving out of houses that are, you know, haunted or you know, or there's um, spirits there that cause you know, wreak havoc or whatever. And that it, it's you, you have psychic mediums going into those places, and it's not actually. Um, you know, some outside entity. It's an energy that has been built up over time there uh, versus what, you know, people are perceiving it to be. So it's it's really interesting. And definitely check out the article if you haven't, because I think it really explains it well. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I mean, you know, I guess it would take a really good medium like yourself or Renee to ask, or Je- Jenny's awesome. I talked to Jenny the other night. And um, Jenny is just an awesome medium. I don't, I, I don't, I'm not sure, you know, what stops her from giving more readings. But anyways, that's her business. But I'm glad she's doing the shows, and um, more shows now. But um, yeah, same yeah, here, same here. Yeah, Jenny was talking about how she went to a friend's house. If you guys heard her uh, show, the last show that she did here. Uh, she was talking about how she went to a friend's house who thought she had a spirit there. And actually, the spirit was the friend. Her, it was herself in the past when she was going through a really difficult time in her life. So that is also very interesting. So, yes, um, thought forms that we create ourselves, um, you know what I mean? It's like it's just so interesting, you know? It really is, and I think it, you know, and I don't know about if it's, um, I do think that it takes somebody to have discernment to kind of figure some of those things out, because I think a lot of times when you have people that may not under, this is myself included, that or anybody out there that's doing readings, you may not, what you're seeing or what your perception of what you're seeing, it may not always be, you know, what you think it is. So discernment really is super super important with that, um, which, you know, that's why I think it's so important to um, practice and, and learn uh, versus just kind of, well, and you, I'm not saying you don't just jump in to something to learn, but rather than just jump into something, you know, on your first day that you realize you might have um, abilities and start charging people $300 to have a 30-minute session with them, you know, because you can kind of figure out if they're going to break up with their boyfriend. So to me, there's uh, the discernment for understanding energy is super important. And I'm still learning. I mean, all of us really are. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, there's just no way that we can, you know, as I always say, we're at the tip of the iceberg with this stuff, really, you know. So, you know, I mean, but you got to keep learning. And as I said to you before, Shelby, I like the older books on this stuff. I know there's new information out there, but I swear when I read the older books that came out on mediumship and and everything like that, it's like there's more truth in those. And I think that um, a lot of the books that come out now um, about energy and whatnot, I mean, they're just kind of, I don't know, they're echoing what has gone before, what, what has been discovered years ago, um, you know what I mean? And, and so I, I think it's important to read the older stuff, too. Yeah, I do. I, I, 
I don't know. I, I think there's a healthy kind of marriage happening between a lot of the older information and then especially with the newer information. And I think with this, especially with um, – I hang out on a couple of different forums, but there are some younger people um, – right now that I'm talking to on different platforms that are sort of kind of just developing and watching some of the information that they know and understanding energy in ways that, uh, you know, somebody that's been practicing for, you know, decades may not may not be seeing. I just, I find it fascinating that we're continuing to open, open, open up and new information is coming in. So, but I, so I do feel um, that it's important to kind of read into both of those. I, I think there has to be a good balance between them. Like, I don't think it just tips to the older ways of doing things or the newer ways of doing things. I think a good balance in between the two of them. Because I think what's happening now is people are seeing energy more in layers than they ever have. And those layers that weren't seen or understood maybe, I guess, by people the way they're understood today, um, it's just changed a lot. Not everything. I mean, obviously, you know, books have been written for centuries that have information, good information in them. So I don't mean that at all, you know, to say at all that to discard them or not pay attention to them. Um, right. But there's something right. to some of those, some of the books being written now are so high, like high pitched is the best way I can describe them. But um, the 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 energy of the books are just like this. It's like a fine mist almost. And trying to read through some of there's so much information in some of these books. It's real mental too. You know, there's it it seems a lot of the, a lot of the newer books that I have read anyway recently um, well, seems to be real really like that. It, it's hard to read some of them. I know. That's why I sent you that book recently, and I was like. Man, I'm never going to get through this. I'm sending it to Shelby. <laughs> <laughs> I love stuff like that because I just, I think it's neat to um, really, like, I mean, I can go to, I have one book uh, that I read, but this is an older one, so it doesn't really count, but I think it was written in, like, the 80s or something. But um, I had read out of it a couple of shows ago. It's a, it's a Mahatma by Brian Gratton, and I can read a paragraph of that and spend an hour reflecting on some of the information that's in there, but it reads so easily, you know, it's not like uh, versus somebody around the same time that he, he had published, Joshua David Stone has got some books out that are just, they're almost so difficult to get through because there's just so much information. I do feel like a lot of the newer stuff is like that, though. Oh, yeah. You're right. It is. It is. And you're right. You do have to have a balance, you know. I'm just, um, the older I get, I guess the more uh, cynical I get. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. It's not, it's not that. I, I don't think it's that at all, Corrine. I think it's, I just think it, you know, it's whatever relates to you. I mean, there's not really, I guess, to me, there's not really a good it's not right or wrong either way, right? I mean, it's just however you're, however it works for you. That's all that matters. Right, right. So um, I just want to mention a couple things um, that are the scariest things that I've encountered in my life. Um, okay, so everyone knows who Annabelle the doll is, right? Do you know who Annabelle the doll is? I don't. I don't think so. I mean, my kid was telling me about some Robert the doll in the car on the way <laughs> on the way home tonight, and I'm like, it, I, it was creeping me out. <laughs> Robert the doll is very scary. I agree with that, and the thing is creepy looking too. Um, but anyway, so you know, um, with the Warrens, um, they're the ones who you know. If you if you've seen the movie The Conjuring. There's Conjuring 1, 2, and 3, um, and Annabelle the doll figures prominently in the movie. But So the movie, of course, it's all Hollywood eyes. The real doll does not look like a Chucky doll, but it looks like um, it's a Raggedy Ann doll. It's, just, it's simply a, a large Raggedy Ann doll. So the stories about the Raggedy Ann doll um, – Man, those, I was sitting right next to the doll when I was at their house. And as the, <laughs> and it clearly says on the outside of the glass, do not 
touch, right? And I'm like, oh, my eyes powering. I'm like, I hope I accidentally don't touch the thing because I was so close to it. But um, so Ed and Lorraine started telling the stories about what the doll had done. So the story is that these young girls um, were renting an apartment somewhere in Connecticut, and um, they were going to school to be nurses. So the mother of one of the girls bought them an Annabelle doll, just, you know, as a gesture, like whatever. She got it at a used, um, like a Goodwill or something, and gave it to one of the girls. So one of the, the girl that she gave it to her daughter started treating the doll like, like the doll was a real little girl. So she comes home one day, the girl comes home one day, and Annabelle, the doll, is sitting or standing by the doorway. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> but then the boyfriend of the girl um, started cracking on the doll and saying, this doll is nothing but a whatever, because the girl was freaking out a little bit because the, the doll started doing things like, you know, unnatural, supernatural things. So the boyfriend threw the doll across the room and went to go take a nap or something, and when he woke up, <laughs> When he woke up, I don't, I don't mean to be laughing. It's kind of funny, though. When he woke up from the, from the nap, he was, like, slashed, and he said that the Annabelle had come after him and put the cuts in him. Now, I never saw pictures of the cuts. I don't know if that's true or just uh, whatever. So, anyways, the doll, as time went on, got more and more active, and they called in a medium. Now, to find out what, you know, about the doll. Now, this is where having an excellent medium comes in handy, okay? So they bring in this medium, and the medium tells them that the doll has the spirit of a six-year-old girl who, who died out in front of their house in it. It's a six-year-old girl who died in the, in the body of the doll. So they're like, oh, we feel so sorry for the doll now. You know, we feel so sorry for this little girl, the poor little girl. So they start treating it even more like a human <laughs> So, of course, the medium was completely incorrect, okay? So this is where going to a crappy medium is harmful. <laughs> 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 so they brought... So finally, the Warrens were called in because the doll continued to do, you know, kind of malicious things. So the Warrens came in and, you know, figured out that, you know, no, it wasn't the spirit of a six-year-old girl. It was actually demonic, non-human energy in, in the doll. And so all this other stuff ensued. But even after the Warrens got the doll and put it in the case, or before they put it in the case, they had it sitting out there. There were many visitors to the Warren's house, and they would play with the doll. They'd pick it up and make comments. And there were three incidents, at least three incidents, that they told us about where this cop, uh, a cop was one of them. A cop, you know, left, uh, Ed left the room to get a phone call, and the cop picked up the doll, even though Ed said, don't touch anything in here. And then the cop, like, turned white as a sheet and quit the force. And he wouldn't tell Ed what happened with the doll. And then another couple came there on a motorcycle, and when they left there, they got killed in an accident. Anyways, it's horrific. But among some of the um, among some of the um, uh, artifacts in the museum that they have there are pig's teeth. The pig's pig teeth. Pig's teeth. The pig's teeth were taken out of the flesh of a girl that was haunted and being hounded by supposed, de you know, demons or something. But I thought that was so, that to me, that is wicked creepy. Pig's teeth? You know what I mean? Yeah, it, is. <laughs> it is. I mean, what we're talking, also talking about a possessed doll. So, I mean, you know, it's all kind of, it's all kind of creepy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, I I would move out. No, I'm just kidding. I, just, I probably would freak out if I saw a little doll running after me, though. That's scary. That's I like know. Chucky was so. That's why Chucky, the movie Chucky, was so uh, did so well because people were like, oh, no, thank you. <laughs> I mean, it's just so creepy. 
But and then uh, they have a million stories. I'm just like hitting on a few of them. There's another story where we've all heard of people levitating, right? Um, and levitation is very interesting to me. So there was this guy came to the Warrens and he said, you know, I I've, I've been levitating, and they're like, well, what the hell's going on? I mean, are you trying to practice levitating? No, he was nothing to do with it. But here's what the bottom line was, that the guy worked at a funeral home and he was into necrophilia. Oh, now, boy. you know what that means, okay? So, and so he started levitating, okay? So that, that is like, that's another freaky thing, a freaky story. That, that's that more is, than freaky. <laughs> that is scary. I know, I know. Um, and then, okay, so I'm just going through these very quickly. So there's another story, and I saw the videotape of this at their house. Um, it's an old, you know, it was filmed on an old camcorder in the 80s. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's a guy named Maurice Theriault. Maurice Theriault lived, he actually lived in Massachusetts, not too far from here. And he was known as, at the time, he had about a fourth grade education. Um, he was a French, you know, Frenchman, Maurice Theriault, obviously. And he felt there was a curse on him. Meanwhile, he's got a farm with children and a wife. And he was, his wife would see him out working in the field, but he'd also be in the house standing right behind her. So he was... Uh, you know, capable of Wow, yeah, 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 like projecting almost. Yeah, and he had superhuman strength, like he could pick up a car with like two hands or something. And so he really started um, changing. His personality was just getting more and more aggressive and weird. Now, don't ask me, I mean, this is where also where mental illness comes in. He could have been mentally ill in some manner. Um but so they decided to do an exorcism on him, and during this exorcism, I'm looking at the video, and he's got a white T-shirt on. On the white T-shirt appear, like, it looks like blood color lines and sort of half um, letters um, and, and odd shapes um, appearing on his T-shirt and then disappearing. Um, and at the same time, you see his face. His his forehead is he, his face is very red. His forehead is bulging out in places, but then going back down to normal size. Um, and during this exorcism, Ed actually had a coronary. Now, oh, wow. this was like a heavy duty exorcism, obviously. But so they thought at the time they had. Um, you know, cured him of whatever demonic activity they suspected he had. But a few months after this exorcism, he actually shot his wife and then shot himself. He died. The wife did not die. She just, like, she was shot in the arm or something. And so that was the end of that story. But who the hell God, knows? That poor guy. I feel so bad for him. Uh, and you do, all. and you know, I do wonder, like, you know, not that all of the stories are fabricated through mental illness. I don't mean that at all, but I do wonder about how many of them might have that contributing factor to it. Um, I because I've known people personally that feel like they're, you know, those things are happening, but they also have other, um, you know, illnesses happening at the same time. Mental illnesses. I'm not sure what the right. I think that's the right way to say it, but. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I guess if you actually have um, uh, stuff touching touching you too, or you're projecting yourself, uh, which is, I don't know, that's kind of interesting. You know, when my wife went back to work, my son would see her in the bedroom, or he'd see her in the bathroom, and he would think that you know she was home, but she wasn't here; she was at work. So I don't know, you know, that whole residual that goes back to that residual energy too. Right. Right. Yeah, definitely. Um, and another subject that you might be familiar with is hagging. Do you know what hagging hagging is? I don't. Okay, so well, they call it well. Back in the day, they called it getting hagged. 
okay, and they call it getting hagged because, um, and this is a common occurrence with a lot of people, um, you wake up and you can't move. It's like somebody is pinning you to the bed, uh, and you cannot move, you can't wake yourself up, and a lot of times people will say that there's like a, now if it's a woman, it's called a succubus. Mm -hmm. so on top of you that, and supposedly she looks kind of witchy a lot mm -hmm. of times. Um, so she's a succubus and she's actually raping you. Um, and an incubus is a male that's on top of you raping, raping a woman or it could be a man too, I guess. But, um, but this is a very common occurrence, this paralyzation when you're waking up and you can't wake yourself up. And I read a whole book on it. I, I'm trying to remember the guy's name um, who wrote it. David, oh, my God, I, can't, I want to say Huffman or something like that. But it was a very good book trying to explain the, um, you know, things of um, getting hags, you know. Yeah, but I would like to, what, what did you say? I would like to look into that. It's very interesting. It is, man. And, and it happens to a lot of people. No, no. I, I have, have, yeah, I have, I'm not, not the succubus part or the incubus part, but I have, uh, a lot of experiences and have always had sleep paralysis and felt like growing up it was something attacking me basically, but I've actually learned to use it for astral projection. So once I got past the fear, um, and I guess cleared, you know, cleared myself and raised my vibration. I learned to use that, um, the sleep paralysis. There's like this certain point when you realize you can't wake up that you can literally, I know this sounds crazy, <laughs> but you can, I roll back and forth from left to right and I'll pop right out of my body. And it's, it's like astral projection. So, but my experience with, with it just was just starting to be able to do this, uh, able normal like to control it i guess has been just been within the last couple of years but since i was a child i've had sleep paralysis because it scared me i think that i had so much fear that i may have been attracting negative energies to me so that's probably why uh, i saw some of the things or heard some of the things that i did while it was happening um, but i don't have those experiences um, now that i know that I don't have to be scared. I don't. But that's really interesting. I know a lot of people um, that have sleep paralysis. Well, I don't know them, but I've read a lot of stories because I, I had it for so long. You know, I've had it for so long. Right. I, I didn't realize that. That That is interesting then. Yeah, you know? it used to, yeah, it used to scare the crap out of me. I, there's still times that I can think back to specific moments of those sleep paralysis, and I can remember – you know, 20 years ago, a certain experience that I had, or 50, you know, 10, 15 years ago, certain experiences that I had, and, and they're terrifying. They're absolutely terrifying. My cousin, actually, I kind of wonder if it runs in the family, too, because my mother has talked about it, but um, my cousin also has it. So, and you always see those those pictures when people are, like, you know, sleep paralysis, and you see the demon sitting on their chest where it feels like it, it's kind of choking yeah. them out, and they can't breathe, because that's what it feels like, but it's just your body can't move and if you're not scared and you know how to shake yourself out of it then it's like this whole new amazing um experience and really cool things can happen with that so that's i wonder if that seeing those things has to do with feeding into the fear of not being able to get up right right well the people that have experienced the incubus incubus and succubus if that's what you want to call them um are, are adamant that they're getting raped so they, no, I mean, they, yeah, I mean, I, they probably, I don't have any doubt in my mind that they're experiencing uh, experiencing that. I mean, fear can put you in some really vulnerable situations. So, yeah, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't doubt that that's what they're, they're experiencing. Right, right. Um, How awful is that? God. No kidding. I know. But I still maintain this, um, after talking about all these horrific things, I still maintain the scariest thing ever is simply living. <laughs> <laughs> it is. <laughs> it really is because nobody knows what the hell's going on or what they're doing for real. <laughs> Everybody's just, when you realize that, you're like, oh, my God, everybody 
nobody knows what's happening. Nobody, you know, it, you can go into panic pretty quick too. Like, oh God, <laughs> totally, totally. I know. Well, I'm with you on that. I am with you. Well, thank you for sharing some of those, man. That that's really interesting. I'll have to check that. Uh, the, the guy's name that you were talking, I'll get with you after the show and get his name. There was, um, but if anybody's interested in the astral projection, there's um, some really cool, uh, just email me and we will we can get together and uh, I'll, I'll tell you some of this stuff. That's probably like a whole different show or something, but um, yeah, interesting stuff. So do you want to do some reading screen? Actually, I picked out something that, um, it, it's an older one, but I haven't read it in a long time, but I was like, oh, this would be good. Okay. So awesome. Was, awesome. Awesome. Okay. There's an artist um, named Dante Rossetti. He was a big uh, pre-Raphaelite artist. If you look up Dante Rossetti, you'll see all his paintings. I love his artwork. Um, he's like late 1800s. Um, excuse me, and, okay, so he had this girlfriend, and the girlfriend was actually his muse for most of his paintings, although he did paint other girls, but her name was Lizzie Sedol, and she was kind of sickly. She was addicted to laudanum, which is opiate, an opiate. Back in the day, a lot of people would take laudanum, and um, so, anyway, while she was sick, um and dying, uh, Dante would bring in other girls into the house that he was fooling around with, right? So she was like, really kind of like, you know, wh- how would you feel, right? I would be like so mad. Anyway, so, so she died and, and, <laughs> so she died and after she died, or when she died, Dante, in a show of loyalty and love to her, buried his new book of poetry, because he was a poet, too. He buried his new book of poetry with Lizzie. When he got on hard times a couple years later, um, he dug up the grave and for the poems. So, <laughs> oh, my God. So much for rest in peace. <laughs> no kidding. So this is a um, this is a poem called A Letter from Elizabeth to Dante, and it's and from what's it called? It's called A Letter from Elizabeth to Dante. So it's okay. from Lizzie to Dante. Okay, Rosetti, did you think I did not see you standing there by my open grave, your coat paled by dust and decay? Did you think I did not spy the way you trembled, the way your dirty hands were steadied only by the brown bottle in your clutch, and how you could not clear your throat? I knew you would come. I hoped the return was born from a desire to touch my hair one more time, but you'd come only to retrieve your last gift of words, the black garland that surrounded me as I was dropped into the earth. Your heart and soul on those pages made to travel with me 13 moons times eternity. But the heart recants as often as it confesses. And there you were, half out of your mind, like a dog scratching away where he believed his next meal would be. Oh, Rosetti, even in death you are killing me. The heat of the fire you had lit graveside seemed to presage your destined hell. Yes, you'd always recognize the great kinship with your namesake, that other Dante who toured the hallways and byways of hell. Um, what, did the, what did the diseases of the dead matter to you then? Your mind was already nearly in shreds, but your need to extract the poems made it clear to me and to your collection of whores that I was not your girl anymore. Although you may have professed, even after that dark day, that since my death, your heart had sunk like a black stone into the depths of the coldest sea. But it was not true, Rosetti. Many hours I watched you slave over the canvas, trying to remember the exact symmetry of my expression. With much effort, The lines of a face were drawn forth, 
the mouth materializing with slight strokes. Perhaps you were recalling how you ate and drank with lust the night I let labored for breath in our bed. Perhaps you realized while you sought to bring me back to life with your brush how you had murdered me every day but one. I was fragile. You could have let me go that I might find fresh air and courage outside of you. But instead, I had to watch you disappear into one woman after another. I had to sleep where I witnessed every deception. They came in and out of the rooms like pacing wolves. How strong they were, how healthy. But my own reflection was a small shadow staring back at a gaping abyss. There in those rooms amongst strangers, I was already a ghost. Through the walls, cries of ecstasy, I was a lamb among you, waiting only for slight sustenance. But it was your own hungry, hunger that triumphed. You could no longer hear me or see me. Every night I would ask why you had brought me there. Yes, to be your muse, deaf and dumb like a doll. But look, Rosetti, did you remember any of these things when you came to retrieve your manuscript, when you uncrossed my arms with gloved fingers and plucked the final gesture of love from me? God. That's it. <laughs> Oh my God! <laughs> I don't know about y'all, <laughs> but wow, he went nuts afterwards. Obviously, he was—he was already becoming an addict when she died. But then he was like out of his mind. So he i mean, you kind of have to be to be digging up your, you know, yeah. your your flame. Wow! Yeah. Oh man, that like breaks my heart too. Just thinking about, you know. Thinking about that, oh, man, that was yeah. intense. <laughs> yeah, thank you. But So I thought I'd read that one. I think it's a pretty good one, you know? <laughs> yeah, that is, I mean, I thought it was awesome. I loved it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you have, like, the perfect voice to read stuff like that, too, because just, I just got sucked in. I'm like, oh, wait, we're on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, <laughs> Jenny says, so I need to go watch the Disney movie now. <laughs> it was creepy. It was creepy. God, could you imagine that? No. No. I mean, you know, who knows if she was haunting him or what? You know what I mean? I mean, who knows? Yeah, it was yeah. probably his own, like, I mean, come on. Like, I would, I mean, think that that would, especially if he had addiction problems, when she, you know, had died or starting to get addiction problems, I mean, I would imagine that did make him go crazy. Oh, yeah. It, and yeah. it did feel very haunting. I mean, he, in a way, he probably felt very responsible for every, you know, all parts of it. So, golly. Yeah. What a life. Oh, here's here's another short one, Shelby. It's called Speakeasy. And okay. this is nice. This is nice and chipper, not. Yeah, but it's <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, speakeasy. This is not the speakeasy where a man who says he's dying asks for a quarter, where Monroe's and Harlow's flutter by, where you imagine you'll meet a woman with eyelashes like butterflies who wants to have your child. This is not the afternoon of swallows in the swimming pool. This is not the super wild rose scent of a monarch emerging from its cocoon. This is not the phone ringing in early morning to broadcast death. This is not the year of tenderness. Hmm. So, just a reminder. <laughs> so, <laughs> how can people get more of this stuff from you, Kareen? Well, if they if they need to be more depressed... Um, <laughs> whatever you <laughs> whatever I, I, I love know. I love it I love it I love it thank you thank you um so yeah I sell all of my books at um kareendewinter.com of course there's some that are out of print that aren't on there but there's plenty on there that you can get and you can get nice and sad and blue 
uh, over any of the different books that are on there. So <laughs> please partake. <laughs> <laughs> are you still on Amazon too, or are you just selling straight off your website? No, there's a few on Amazon still. Um, well, the, the Sensitive Soul's Guide to Waking Up is there, and so is Valentine's for the Dead, which is short fiction. That's on there. So just those two are on uh, Amazon. Oh, okay, and then the rest of them you can find on uh, on your website. I mean, you are an incredible writer, and thank you for posting the link, Jenny. It is KareenWinner.com. I mean, there's some really good – I've not only listened to some of your poetry, I've read some of your stuff. I mean, Karina is really uh, an incredible – you can tell you, you write with your heart, your soul. You know, it just – it's amazing. And then when you read, it's even better. It's like, God, this is, you have the perfect voice for it. Oh, thank you. Hopefully, as I keep smoking, I'm probably not going <laughs> to. <laughs> oh, my God, Karen. <laughs> okay. Do you want to do, do you, are you up to do some readings tonight? Uh, I don't mind. I'll, I'll chime in if you would like to. What do you mean chime in? We're going to tag team some people. Well, if they want to. I don't even know if anybody – I haven't. If you, if anybody would like a reading, you can call in now. The number is 631-353-4342. The show number is 70020 um, as the show, and then you can just press 1. I should see you when you call in. If you want a reading, if you don't, that's okay, too. It's up. It's up to y'all. And I know that my um, – we started a little bit late, so I think you – actually, it was funny because I you, – you had texted me about starting a little bit late, and I was just in the – freaking out with my wife. I'm like, what? Oh, crap, I'm not going to be back in time. I have to be at least an hour later. So it, like, actually ended up working out perfect. And what's even more perfect, Shelby, is that I had an appointment at 6.15, and the girl, and I was like, I was going to have to tell her to hurry up for that, you know. And, but then she called me and said, look, it, I'm I'm running real early. Do you want to come early? So it was perfect, you know. Nice. Yeah, that is, yeah, it was perfect because I kept, I, I yeah. And then I'm like, it's going to be too late and I'm not going to, because I usually don't do readings, you know, too late. Because I wake up so early, but I feel kind of hyper, I guess, because of the moon. Um, and probably because I'm finally out of the out of the car, but um, I don't yeah, think anybody's gonna gonna call in tonight um, for a reading, so that's okay. Um, but we we will be on um, in November. And also, if you are listening and you do want a reading with Kareen, you can go to KareenDeWinner.com and book a reading. You can also, if you want to hear uh, her, her in action. If you don't get to, or since you won't get to tonight, Chris Times, uh, Curious Times, Chris Times, I guess it's Curious Times with Chris, is going to have Kareen on Saturday, right? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. This Saturday, and that's at 10 Eastern, I think, right? 10 Eastern. Yeah. No one ever calls in when I'm on, but whatever, you know? Oh, re- that, no. I just listened to one in archives, and people were calling in. Really? <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Oh, wait, unless it was a different show. You were somewhere. I heard you giving readings. Okay. Okay. Well, I mean, sometimes I guess they call in, but it just feels like, a, well, whatever. It feels like a lot of times they don't, but that's that's okay. I mean, whatever. I, I, I can babble on about a lot of different stuff, you know? <laughs> Well, no, I mean, I think you're, I not that you can't babble on, but I think you're an excellent reader, and I've heard you in action. So, again, if there's people out there that want uh, want a reading, you can definitely, you can definitely book with Kareem. And so that's at your KareemToWinner.com website that they book, correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You can also find her, Kareem, uh, the winner of Facebook page. It shows some of her art. Um, you can connect with um, purpleplace.com also. Can you, will you tell us a little bit before we go? Can you tell us a little bit about the purple plates? Um, yeah. Um, I, I always tell people I'm not a scientist, although I, I've had to learn a lot about science since I began this company almost 20 years ago now. Um, 
So the plates are basically healing energy um, and free energy as termed by Nikola Tesla was is the energy that exists naturally in different parts of the world, such as Palermo, Italy, um, on top of the uh, Himalayan mountains. Um, so th the theory of the place is that the energy, the free energy, which is healing and 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 peaceful and and all that good stuff, is focused on the place, and um, so that if you're using the place for Say, I use them for everything. I have one in my bra every day anyways, but I have it by the computer. Also, the the creator of the place, Ralph, um, created the place or, or in part due to radio, radio, radioactive, um, how to negate radioactive uh, materials. Because he used to work for the, in the OSS, which was the CIA before it turned into the CIA. And one of the things they wanted him to do was uh, create, you know, because he was a scientist, create something to negate um, radioactive effects. So they're very good on cell phones, by your computer. They're also, they put things back into balance in the human body that are out of balance. Say you have a burn or you have a headache or a stomachache or cramps or something like that. It, you know, with putting the plate near your body, will definitely help with that. Also, boost your immune system. So it's just wonderful for so many things, clearing your food and water of mm -hmm. um, of the negative um, residue that, that, you know, is on most food that we get from the grocery store. I mean, there's just so many things that they're useful for that you really can't go wrong. And, of course, I always tell people I have money back there and see, no questions asked. Um, you know, so you're not really risking anything. So I say give it a try if you have not. I know most people here have one because if they didn't, I'd beat them up. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, I'm, uh, and I don't get paid to, like, say any of this stuff either, but I want to say I have actually myself, uh, my family has purchased a lot of them because we use them on everything. And if you're big into energy work and you clear your food and you clear your water, you understand that that takes up quite a bit of time, especially if you're in a hurry to do some things. Um, sometimes it can be difficult to get yourself grounded and centered and actually push the energy into certain things. And we can set intent, but if you really want to get into it, then, you know, you have to be in that state. I have found that these plates work um, so that I don't have to work so hard. I keep them in my refrigerator. I keep them in every one of my cabinets. I actually did an exper I've done experiments with them, plant-based experiments with them. Um, and I, I actually, uh, I have a, oh, she's probably like 20 years old, uh, philodendron out. And I put, she's just been a little weak and she's been suffering for a little while. So I stuck two, uh, plates down into her pot on either side and, um, left, I've left them in for over a year and she's busted out of her old pot and I have, I've actually just had to transplant her. So, and she hasn't, but she hasn't had a growth burst like that, um, since I've owned her. So, pretty incredible, um, product in my personal opinion. Um, so if yeah. you don't have one, um, please definitely check them out. I mean, I keep the little discs in my wallet. I, I love carrying one around my heart chakra when I'm out in public. Um, they're they're amazing. They help with my hips pain. Um, I I just can't say enough about them. Right. Thank you, Shelby. Thank you. And like that's why I just like sometimes I'll do giveaways because I want people to experience them, even if they're unwilling to spend that ten bucks or whatever it is, you know. Um. So, but yeah, they they're amazing, and I'm so honored to be part of you know, getting them out there to the world. I just, I love it, you know. And like I always tell people also, if you can't afford it, talk to me. I'll probably send you one because we do that, you know. Um, it's yep, not a big yep deal. definitely. Yeah, it's not a big deal for me to send you something um, at no charge if you cannot afford it. Because so, I, I want you to experience it. I want, I want everyone to have it, you know. Yeah, and I I feel like when people get them, <laughs> even if they if they do get one for free, that they'll save up to buy more. I mean, it's just it's solid product, and I love it. So, well, I won't I won't keep you, Kareen. Um, speaking um, of giveaways, I am going to do a giveaway show. This is coming up in November. 
Uh, so keep keep that up in mind, guys. Um, and then I'm going to try to do some other things. I wanted to get uh, community involved, involved, the spiritual community on um, in two talks to get involved and kind of do like a field day type thing. But I, I'm actually going to be talking to Jenny about that hopefully soon um, to try to get something together. We may even we don't know, do it on her show. I'm not, I'm not sure yet. I haven't figured out all the the details. But um, so stay tuned and keep listening. Definitely visit intuitalks.com because that's where we are broadcasting from. Thank you again, Corrine, for being here. Oh, um, and thanks for listening to my wild um, text about I, I'm like I'm driving. I don't know, if, you know, <laughs> what's going to happen. So, and Jenny, thank you. I was so worried. So I appreciate both you guys uh, for that. Um, and we will not be here next week. So join us on uh, November the seventh at seven Eastern with Sue Broom, so we can talk about her new book, Signs from Your Loved Ones. I appreciate everyone that's listening live and everyone that's listening in archives or on playback. I appreciate all of your uh, support. Keep the emails coming. I love the questions that you guys send in. Uh, and I, I like making new friends, man. I've made a lot of new – I've met a lot of really incredible people this way. So um, I appreciate everybody for your not just your support but um, for your input on different things. And I, I love hearing your opinions and topics on the stuff that we talk about. Um, so keep it coming. You can reach me at um, you can reach me at thirdeyebetty.com here on Intuitalk. Uh, you can find me pretty much on any social media. Just hit hashtag thirdeyebetty, and I'll pop up on Instagram, um, Twitter, Facebook. I'm not on uh, Tumblr because I can't keep up with any more social media. I'm too busy. <laughs> it's just too much. Anyway, all right. Thank you, everybody, uh, for a fun show. Karina, this was fun, and thank you so much for sharing, um, especially those last two uh, readings that you did. That was awesome. Uh, you're welcome. Thank you, Shelby. All right, you guys. You have a fantastic rest of the week. And remember, we will see you next, not next week, but the following week, November the 7th. So thank you, everybody. Have a good night.